So we're back, we're gonna take a quick look to see how this uh, this veneering in the vacuum bag has turned out. So I'm gonna disconnect the vacuum bag and we'll take a look. Yeah, so this came out of the bag and everything feels pretty good. Everything seems to be um, sucked down to the top. I like to check see if there's any gaps or anything. Sometimes you'll hear um, a little hollow spot like there right now. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's around the pickup uh, hole there where we have those blocks in there so there's a little gap in there that's what you would hear if there was a gap so right now everything looks pretty good I'm gonna take this tape off and begin to um, cut around all the holes and everything mm -hmm. so uh, so got to be a little careful when I'm pulling this tape off I don't want to accidentally um, pull any veneer with it even though everything should be glued down pretty good wow that's that is perfectly flush. That's exactly what I wanted. If you hear music playing upstairs, it's a customer picking up a guitar or one of the techs working on a guitar, setting it up up there. Yes, yeah, one of our techs tuning in. It's probably Wes. Tape is peeling off real good. I'm not getting any fibers or anything. There we are. That is awesome. So I'm gonna grab my knife instead of just a razor blade. I've been using just a razor blade, but that's not very safe. Uh, let me grab my knife and I will be back. I got my couple knives here just to help me trim things out and um, some reamers so I can op open up those holes. And then I'm definitely gonna need these because yeah, the older we get, the more our eyesight fails us. My doctor was right, after the age of 40, your eyes changed drastically, and it was like overnight that my eyes changed at 40. So now I need extra help. So we'll get started on this. We'll really take our time too because I don't want to go too far and actually go on to the top. I just want to stay in these pockets as much as possible. I'll go back over these with a with a a bearing bit, you know, a router bit with the bearings on underneath and follow the pockets inside once I get most of this trimmed. Thank you. 
Let's get a little bit closer on this. I don't know if it was a good idea to put that uh, paper towel, and towel down in there, but uh, it worked. There's no glue sticking to it, which was my biggest worry. Actually, that was pretty good. This is a marking knife, but it worked good to follow that curve. Not too shabby. Might not have to go on the router and trim this. There we go. That looks pretty good. This way. There's a slight little gap between the block 
in the top I'm trying to find that it should kind of pop in there once we find it Lock's just about ready to come out. I think there's just a little bit more in there. Yep, just a little bit more. There's a gap. Just found it. There we go. Looks pretty good. Let's clean that edge up just a little bit. There we go. Then we'll come back with some sandpaper and cl clean that up. Now, found the other one. There's the cat. Take your time again because we don't want this veneer to split.
here's the other gap. And there we go. And I'll get a little piece of paper and sand that area out. trying to feel any pieces that might be overhanging because if you're not careful and you pull up then it will take that veneer with it too. A little piece right there. Again, like I mentioned in the, in the introduction video to this, uh, most times we're milling off the top and putting in top and recarving. So we would be using um, a router bit to open these pockets and they would be nice and neat. I did this pretty neat for, for a veneer. We're not that far off. So we can trim up these sides just a little bit. Not totally necessary. We're going to be routing the binding, but just so we don't snag anything later on while we're moving the piece around. This is there, that little piece that cracked on me. And it's right close to the edge, so most of it's gonna get cut off with uh, routing of the binding and put and on the binding. And then what li whatever's left will be in the burst, and it should 
disappear, no problem. I'm trying to cut these in the direction of the grain, just like like if you were cutting with a um, router. You want to make sure you go the right way so it doesn't uh, go with the grain and pull pull chunk out. So if I'm cutting this way, it can pull this chunk out. But if I cut it this way, it it it's uh it has nowhere to go. But if you would pull it this way, it can always break here. So now I can cut this way and then I'll cut this way, then I'll cut that way. Well, my battery took a dump and I didn't realize. So I don't know where we're at at this video at this point, but we just opened these up, um, clean the sides up, clean this a little off. So uh, we'll just do a little bit more cleaning here. I'll worry about those a little bit later. I'll get uh, some pliers, something I can stick in there. Now, we're going to do these holes down in there. Just poke that through a little bit. Poke that through. And this boy. All right. Here we go. That veneer's on. The holes are open. Uh, the, the, the stud pieces that go for the Nashville uh, tunematic there, um, it we'll measure out and I'll get super close and, and I'll be able to find them a little bit better once we measure everything out and get ready to open those up. For right now, I don't want to mess with them, but uh, we're good. And uh, you can see it's flush. Everything's tight. It, like, I can't complain about this. This is uh, turned out pretty good. So now we're going to get uh, ready for some binding. Um, so keep watching this video and uh, see the process as we go along. So I was asked a question, um, and I knew this question was coming. Um, is it worth 
worth it to take a guitar that's not worth much and to put all this work into it? Um, th that's a good question. Um, and when I know I was going to receive it, I'd say worth is equated to value. Uh, so for some people, does it have value? That's how I'd like to, to, to think of things. Um, the value of what we're doing to this is worth it to the customer. Um, he's requested to customize this and he chose the, the veneer. He's going to choose the color, um, how it's painted on the back, uh, what process we used on, on that, whether it's going to be um, a bleeding cherry, like an old vintage one, or just uh, a, a wine color. We haven't got that far yet, but the burst, he has something in mind for that. Um, it, he, I think he's putting on new parts. He gathered parts. He bought it as a shell. So he's getting to choose exactly how he wants this guitar. So the value is, at the end, he gets exactly what he wants. And um, by the time he considers the money for the parts, the shell, and our work, uh, he might be around what he can get for uh, a Gibson standard. But he gets exactly what he wants. He gets the color he wants. Um, he just can't find exactly everything he wants in a guitar available right now. And that doesn't mean they're not out there. It's just that they, he can't find one for sale. So what he's doing is joining in on this process. And um, he gets to see it from beginning to end. And he gets to uh, chime in on what he wants. So for him, it's worth, uh, worth it. There's value in this process that we're doing. So in, um, for us, I mean, we've taken, taken uh, these same guitars. Um, you can get them cheap, five, 600 bucks, sometimes with the parts on them. Um, and you can put some time and effort into a customized paint job, um, electronics, uh, tuners, bridge. Um, and we have put new put new maple caps on them, bound them, bound the neck, uh, put new fretboards on them with uh, vintage correct inlays. And uh, believe it or not, we can, we can ask good money. Uh, it, that makes it worth it at times to do it, even for us financially. Um, you're not going to make a windfall on them, but uh, it's fun. It gives us a chance to be creative and to do things that we want to do. So even for us, it's worth it. It has value because uh, it, uh, it gets the creative juices flowing and we get to use our hands and our, our creative and artistic side to do exactly what we want. Um, and that's how we approach a lot of things here and as well as our custom builds. It's uh, let's do what we want to do. Or if we get a request from a customer, um, let's do what they want to do. And there's always value in doing that. Sorry for the air compressor, but thanks and we'll see you uh, in the next process.